In this tutorial, we will discuss the fixture library and create our own custom fixture. In the setup view, you can click on the fixture library button to get to the different libraries. In this view, you can switch between the factory library, user library and show library. The factory library is a default fixture library of the console. You can update this library when new fixtures are released. This can be done via the online factory library update. You can also download the update from the Chimp product page on the Highlight website. You cannot modify the factory library yourself. This way, the fixture files remain identical in all consoles. In the user library, you can add your own and custom fixtures. You can add, delete, modify, import, and export fixtures via the button bar. By pressing the Add Fixture button, you can create a new fixture. With the Delete Fixture and Edit Fixture buttons, you can delete or edit existing fixtures. The button Transfer Fixture transfers the selected fixture files into the show library or transfers the fixtures from the show library into the user library. Via the button Import Fixtures, you can import fixtures from a USB stick into the user library or the show library. Via the button Export Fixtures, you can export your fixtures to a USB stick. Fixtures that are stored in the user library are available in any show. Fixtures that are stored in the show library are only available in that particular show. In the show library, you can find all fixtures you used in your show. In this example, we will create our own fixture in the user library. Go to the user library and press the Add Fixture button. The console now opens the fixture wizard. You can choose to create a completely new fixture or to use an existing fixture as a template. In the example, we will create a completely new fixture. In the drop down menu, under the heading Manufacturer, you can choose from a list of manufacturers whose fixtures have already been added. You can enter a manufacturer's name via the keyboard symbol. In the box type, you enter the name of the fixture. At mode, you enter the mode that the fixture has, for example, 40 channels or advanced. Under category, you can select the category for the fixture. Under beam type, you can select the type of the beam. Under Author, you can enter who created the fixture. Under Description, you can add a summary or description of special items in the fixture. Once you have filled in all the boxes as desired, you can confirm the information by pressing Next. In the next step, you have to indicate how many DMX channels the fixture uses. The button Create brings you to the last step of the Fixture Builder. You can change the information already entered for the fixture via the button Fixture Definition. A fixture can consist of multiple instances. An instance consists of a module. A multi-cell fixture, like a pixel bar with 12 RGB cells, consists of 13 instances and two modules. A module consists, for example, of a dimmer, a tilt, and a shutter channel. The second module consists of three channels, namely red, green, and blue. The fixture consists of one instance with module 1 and 12 instances with module 2. The console has already added a module with the number entered in the channel count. In the case of the example, this is 40 DMX channels. In the example, we first delete the existing module by pressing Delete Module. To add a module, click on Modules and then on Add Module. We call the module main and give it a channel count of four channels. Press Add and Add More. We add another module with the name Pixel and give it a channel count of three. Press Add and Edit Module. The console now opens the last add-in module in the Edit menu. In this menu, you can add, delete, and edit channels. 
In the spreadsheet, you can edit all the values per channel. We select the cell in the parameter column of the first channel and press set. The console now opens a pop-up with all available parameters. Using the filter menu on the right, you can quickly filter parameters by parameter groups. If the unassigned parameters button is on, parameters already set will no longer appear in the list. The coarse and fine buttons allow you to choose whether the parameter is 8 or 16 bit. We choose the parameter red and coarse for 8 bit. We repeat the previous step twice for the color green on channel 2 and blue on channel 3. In the column dimmable, you can indicate whether these colors are dimmable or not. In the column type, we choose whether the parameter has a fade or snap function. The default column allows you to enter the value that the console sends by default on this channel. The blackout and highlight columns allow you to enter the value that the console should output when you press the blackout or highlight button. In the column MIB type, you can set the move in black function between no move in black, mark 0 and mark. We will discuss the ranges column when we adjust the other module. In the inverted column, you can choose to invert the values. The DMX min and the DMX max columns give you the option to set the minimum and maximum DMX value for the chosen parameter. The virtual dimmer can be switched on and off for this module by pressing the virtual dimmer button. You can switch between the modules by pressing the drop down menu at the top right. We select the main module. For channel 1, we select a dimmer parameter. For channel 2 and 3, we select the tilt parameter, and for channel 3, we select the fine function to make this channel 16 bit. By selecting two cells simultaneously and then pressing set, the console automatically sets the second channel to 16 bit. For channel 4, we select the shutter parameter. For the shutter channel, we will set ranges. This is done by pressing the ranges cell. We press the add range button. You can choose between a single range or a proportional range. For the shutter open range, we choose the single range. For min DMX value, we enter 0, and for the max DMX value, we enter 0. For the name of the range, we enter shutter open. In the drop-down menu representation, you can choose which icons or colors the console should show when you activate the corresponding range. You confirm the range by pressing OK. To add more than one range at a time, press the Add Multiple button. Now you can choose between By Range Count or Size Per Range. The By Range Count option divides the number of ranges you enter in the count field between the min and max values. The By Size Per Range function adds ranges with the space entered at the DMX value per range in between them. In the example, we enter 1 for start DMX value, 2 for the DMX values per range, and 5 for count. At the base name, we fill in shutter FX. The console will proceed with the numbering itself. To add a proportional range, for example, for a strobe, from 1 Hz to 25 Hz, we press Add Range and choose the Proportional Range function. The min DMX value is filled by the console itself with the next available value. The name is set to Strobe. The min display value is set to 1 and the max to 25. We leave the prefix empty and fill in Hz at suffix. If you now change the shutter values, the console will display the correct range. Now that the modules are ready, you can create the instances. 
Click on Instances. Now press Add Instance. At Name, we choose the same name as the module. We start with the main module. For user number, we choose zero. For instant start, we enter one, and for instant count, we also enter one. We select the main module from the list at the bottom of the screen and press Add. The console now has added an instance and shows an example of the fixture channels in the screen on the right. We add the last module via Add Instances. The name of the module is Pixel. At user number, we fill in 1. The instant start number is set by the console itself, based on the number of DMX channels of the main module. We leave it at 5. Because our pixel bar has 12 pixels, we enter 12 at instant count and select the pixel module from the list. Press Add to confirm the settings. Now that we have added all the instances, we press Save and Close, which closes the fixture builder. Our fixture is now visible in the user library. The fixture can now be patched, exported or transferred between existing shows and libraries. Thanks for watching.